Justin Trudeau's personal neurosis regarding manhood and the family unit is dividing citizen from citizen, community from community for a purpose. In Canada, Father's Day is observed to honor fatherhood every year on the third Sunday of June. Although not a public holiday, many Canadians celebrate this day to show appreciation and give respect to fathers and father figures. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is not one of them. While the reasons for his reticence are worth exploring, media in Canada devote no space to the subject. One can only guess at the motivation which cap. Belief come from several factors, some personal, some political. In the beginning, there was the family unit. The history of the family is a branch of social history that concerns the socio-cultural evolution of kinship groups from prehistoric to modern times. Within all societies, the family has played a universal role. In other words, the family is a core building block upon which civilization is based. Out of its embryonic prehistoric existence came family values, for example, the honoring father and mother. Over the centuries core values originating in the family unit blossomed to incorporate Western morality as well as concepts of justice and personal freedom. The family represents tradition. It is here that PM Justin Trudeau draws the line. To be caustic about it, Mr. Trudeau hates tradition. Never in his eight years as national leader has our PM advocated on behalf of traditional Canadian values. What can we glean from such a state of mind? Trudeau is a so-called progressive. Based on dedication to woke values, traditional aspects of society are eschewed in favor of globalist values espoused by organizations such as World Economic Forum. In truth, Trudeau's values are WEF values. If not for media obfuscation, the concept would be clear in the minds of Canadians. Justin Trudeau has a nasty habit of believing that his personal values or lack of must be replicated within general society. So-called Father Pierre Trudeau was the same. Call it incessant narcissism based on the flawed idea that the Trudeau family know better. Steeped in arrogance saturated with megalomania, Trudeau Jr. proceeds to force his values, more accurately stated, as neurotic impulses upon society. It's a childish act from a spoiled individual steeped in a lifetime of political privilege. Mr. Trudeau's dedication to erasure of the traditional family unit is, in truth, a national disgrace. Homosexuality, transgenderism, abortion, euthanasia, LGBT and pride parades. Justin backs the entire package to the max. This is a PM who advocates for dangerous hormone therapy for Canadian children. To his way of thinking, there should exist no impediments for kids of any age to transition from boy to girl, and vice versa. Justin Trudeau has no respect for fatherhood. Not out of the question is the idea that his attitude stems from the possibility that our PM is unsure of who his biological father really was. Pierre Trudeau. Fidel Castro. All in all, it's a bit of a crapshoot. Yet, despite personal family-oriented neurosis, a larger reason may exist for Trudeau's animosity toward the family unit. Cultural Action Party has spoken of this on myriad occasion. It's the idea that the PM's anti-family stance is rooted in communist ideology, originated by father of communism Karl Marx as advocated by China, Cuba, former Soviet Union, and other societies venerated by so-called father and son Trudeau. We keep our statement as concise as possible within communist societies, Governments hold jurisdiction over the family unit. By funding SOGI education and the like within the Canadian public school system, our Liberal government replicate communist government policy. Total silence from the CBC. Mums the word from media stalwarts Globe and Mail, Toronto Star and the rest. On the 12th of Never, 
These press people will allude to such ideas. They are being paid to do a job, and they do it well, a deception of what are now 40 million Canadians for the benefit of the Prime Minister who signs their paychecks. For what purpose does a combined government media academic agenda exist to disparage the traditional family unit while promoting LGBT pride as if there's no tomorrow? Is there something about celebrating Father's Day which causes Canada's controlling institutions, in addition to our Prime Minister, to take a lukewarm stand on the subject matter? In Cap's mind, there darn well is. It's found in the topic of manhood. To be certain, Justin Trudeau hates this kind of thing. For him, men are to praise around, at pride parades and sachet across the stages of drag queen TVR. If one cares to notice, anti-manhood is a theme woven through the fabric of our Liberal government's pertinent policy decisions. Like Pierre Trudeau before him, Justin is anti-military, as evidenced by a perpetual lack of funding for the Canadian Armed Forces. Like NHL Hockey Commissioner Gary Bettman, Mr Trudeau advocates for LGBT inclusion in professional sports, Historically speaking, sporting is as old a tradition as the family unit. From Roman chariot races to modern Olympic Games, manhood has been fundamental to Western societies. Justin Trudeau, on the other hand, loves to see professional sports go pretty in pink, another manifestation of his personal animus toward masculinity. For Trudeau, all of Canadian society must be inundated with postmodern rainbow culture as promoted by globalist warriors, like World Economic Forum. There's a lot of money in it for one thing, and Justin Trudeau loves other people's money. It's all about him. What Mr. Trudeau believes must become the social standard of our times. A selfish, pompous individual this guy is to force his twisted woke vision upon society is a question all Canadians should be asking ourselves. The phenomenon reeks of mental illness, to be sure. Justin Trudeau has no right to force his neurotic dysfunction upon Canadian society, upon which we turn to the pragmatic. What percentage of Canadian citizens actually qualify as transgendered? Of the nearly 30.5 million people in Canada aged 15 and older living in a private household in May 2021, 100,815 were transgender 59,460 or non-binary 41,355, accounting for 0.33% of the population. Are we reading this correctly? If we are, it means that over 99% of Canadians are non-transgendered individuals. Talk about a tempest in a teapot. Seeing as this is the case, one must ask a most salient question. For what reason has the topic of transgenderism permeated our entire society? Quick answer because it's supposed to be this way. Because LGBT and best girlfriend transgenderism are being advanced by government and media for a purpose. Relative to the number of transgendered Canadians, the LGBT pride trans movement is making the biggest stink in society in a century. At the top of the transgender totem pole sits Justin Trudeau. In Cap's opinion, this person dislikes manhood in any form. Military, professional sport, government, education, all must be sprinkled with LGBT fairy dust to satisfy the obsessional impulses of the most destructive Prime Minister in Canadian history.